In the summer of 2011, these 18 non-for-profit NGOs in Germany joined hands. Together, we formed a network for WASH. The first joint task of this new German WASH network was to host a hot topic session at the Bonn 2011 conference on the water, energy, and food security nexus. For this, we were able to find excellent partners as co-conveners. For one, we collaborated with the United Nations Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation, UNSGAP, with strong personal support of its Vice Chair, Uschi Eid. The second co-convener was the Ruaf Foundation, an international network of resource centers on urban agriculture and food security. Together, we're all active in the field of WASH. WASH stands for water, sanitation, and hygiene at the household level. These are three inseparable fields of work with huge pro-poor connotations. Having access to these three necessities is something we all take for granted. Yet having access to WASH has many oftentimes unexpected benefits. How many people are truly aware that the current situation kills more people than armed conflicts? Or how many know that girls when they reach the menstrual age frequently drop out of school due to a lack of privacy in the form of a restroom? WASH is directly linked to almost all of the Millennium Development Goals. Political support for the issue is growing, and 2010 saw water and sanitation declared as human rights, a big step in the right direction. But the global situation remains dismal. Approximately 20% of humanity still lives without access to clean water, while 40% live without protection from deadly pathogens which are contained in their own and in their neighbor's excrement. WASH is one of the best preventive medicines. It could save the lives of 4,000 children per day. Most people understand the connection with health, but we underestimate the dimension of the impact. Diarrheal disease is only the tip of the iceberg, with other diseases also assisting in weakening those affected and making them more susceptible to other illnesses. Studies show that improved access to WASH can save health systems $7.3 billion per year. The work time won in a society with WASH access can boost GDPs by up to 7%. The sector definitely deserves more investments as each dollar invested has shown to create up to $34 in economic benefits. The strain on the environment is severe not only because 90% of the world's wastewater goes untreated, but also because we deal irresponsibly with our world's limited resources like water or nutrients required to produce fertilizers that feed our world. The people who benefit the most from safe drinking water and the privacy of toilets are women and children. They are often the ones responsible for carrying water over great distances or tending to the sick and thereby miss out on education or income generating opportunities which could otherwise be available to them. You see, the topic has a huge potential for empowering the poorest of the poor and for lifting up the bottom of the pyramid. However, we came to this conference with the aim of zooming out and viewing a larger picture. There are other fields of work out there, and one of them is energy security. The energy sector has challenges of its own. Growing energy consumption makes it difficult to keep up with demand, while 1.6 billion people still live without access to electricity but may want access in the future. We have to make more efficient use of available energy while tapping into more renewable, sustainable types of energy supply. The third topical field that the conference looked at was food security. And like WASH, food is a basic need, a human right. Every person should have physical and economic access to adequate food or means for its procurement. The first link to WASH becomes apparent when we consider that drinking water is an essential part of food. With a billion people living in hunger, the situation kills six million children per year, or more than a thousand lives while we sit through our 90-minute conference session. The growing global population demands 70% increase in agricultural production by 2050, making it harder and harder to fulfill the four pillars upon which food security rests. The availability of food requires agricultural production. This demands sufficient water and soils rich with nutrients to allow for plant growth. At present, we suffer productivity losses in part through degraded soils and missing access to soil conditioner and fertilizer. Improving the productivity of small-scale farmers 
is one of the key approaches in striving for food security and can provide the poorest of the poor with a direct access to food. Access to food with, begins with the buying power of those that need it, particularly the poor. For subsistence farmers, access to natural resources and the knowledge of how to achieve the best sustainable production results are essential. The third pillar is the utilization of food. It includes food quality and safety, but also the hygienic handling, including wash practices, to let our bodies truly absorb and make efficient use of the food that it consumes. Food security also demands sustainable practices to create stability. Everyone is aware of water scarcity, but few know about the bottleneck of our limited phosphorus reserves. Phosphorus is mined under considerable energy input to create mineral fertilizers. The reserves have a lifeline similar to that of fossil fuels, but our planet depends on it to feed its people. As the available reserves of phosphorus decrease, it becomes more difficult and expensive to mine. Increasing energy prices add to the effect and fertilizer prices rise. The stability of food security is therefore threatened by the poorest of the poor currently being dependent on shifts in global energy and fertilizer prices. But at the Nexus conference, we're not focusing on single fields of work, but rather the big picture and the link in between. Our session was called No Food or Nutrition Security Without Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. And although the main focus was on the connection between wash and food security, the energy connection could not be ignored. But let's have a look at this link. Access to wash services contributes to food security along all four food security pillars. For one, it can increase agricultural production. Productive sanitation is an approach that views sanitation products as a resource and not as a waste. These systems provide irrigation water and nutrients after proper treatment of excreta or wastewater. In the spirit of the nexus, these approaches raise agricultural production and lead to considerable energy savings. Sometimes they even generate energy in the form of biogas. Furthermore, they substitute energy consuming chemical fertilizer and its transport across the globe by using locally available nutrients, closing the loop, by returning them back to the soil instead of destroying them in conventional treatment plants. Secondly, WASH increases access to food. The economic benefits created by WASH particularly benefit low-income households, and since food is one of their main priorities, additional income results in increased access. The extra spending helps to stimulate local food production markets. Thirdly, WASH improves utilization of food. WASH interventions reduce cases of diarrhea and worm infections. A worm living inside a person can consume up to 30% of a person's food intake, with diarrhea causing even, even heavier losses. Since families suffering from hunger are usually the same individuals living without access to WASH, it becomes apparent that governments struggling to feed their citizens can make a substantial contribution to food security by making WASH investments. This helps make more out of the food that's available. Finally, WASH approaches have the power to add stability to food security. Environmentally sustainable systems can prevent pollution of ecosystems while at the same time providing water and nutrients for reuse. The bottom line is that systems that supply fertilizer and energy on a local or regional scale are more independent from global trends and the resulting price swings on the oil or fertilizer markets. All of these concepts are not only theory, and they actually exist in practice. Productive sanitation, for example, could separately collect urine and feces at the household level or other wastewater in the household and allow for more efficient pinpointed treatment and thereby easier and less energy consuming reuse. At a communal or school level, decentralized wastewater treatment systems or DEVATS can treat wastewater in several treatment steps, producing biogas in the process and generating an effluent which can be used in agriculture if planned accordingly. Hygiene awareness campaigns can trigger true changes in behavior in those affected. And by creating true heartfelt demand for water sanitation and hygiene, approaches like community-led total sanitation can mobilize whole communities to better protect their health, improving their access and utilization of available food. If you link productive sanitation approaches with urban agriculture, you have the potential to utilize the created nutrient and water resources close to large settlements where food is required and waste is created. 
Service-oriented business approaches help to ensure long-term operation and maintenance. Such concepts can help to bring improvements to create jobs and to embed local capacity for operational stability. Now let's take one more look at this link, because however promising those examples sound, we have to realize that there is a gap which is currently hindering the full potential from unfolding. To start with, there's too much sectoral thinking and too little focus on cross-sectoral linkages. The reuse of excreta and wastewater currently still has little priority in WASH interventions. This is in part due to missing market incentives and inappropriate national regulations or legal frameworks. Insufficient availability of risk information adds to the matter. At the same time, unclear roles and responsibilities, particularly for the field of sanitation where responsibilities range from the Ministry of Water to Agriculture or Health, add to the taboo of cultural barriers and perceptions. We must all realize that WASH deals with very personal hygiene issues, which involve more software components like hygiene education and not purely technical solutions. The conveners of our session fueled a discussion at the conference by presenting five recommendations as suggestions for the missing puzzle piece. This discussion is still ongoing and we therefore also look forward to your input. Here are the recommendations. We have labeled the first one shifting from disposal to reuse, as we feel it is vital to make a shift from treatment for disposal or waste to treatment for reuse or resource. Innovative approaches offer options for cost recovery. Governments and civil society must work together to promote markets for small-scale entrepreneurs and supply chains for sanitation and hygiene facilities. Recommendation 2 labels cities as hotspots for resource recovery. And we recommend creating an enabling environment for urban agriculture and wash services through comprehensive city planning, aiming at optimizing resource recovery, enhancing food security, and improving environmental management. We want to discuss with you what it takes to turn urban centers from hubs of consumption and major waste generation to places of resource recovery. The third recommendation puts the focus on scalable wash interventions. We recommend concentrating on simple and affordable approaches to scale up wash access and lead to improved health and increased food and nutrition security. Investments in simple, cost-efficient, sustainable, and acceptable WASH interventions at scale are required because only if WASH access is achieved at a large scale will the full potential in relation to health and food and nutrition security unfold. The fourth recommendation states a need for multi-level governance. The recommendation calls for clear national and municipal roles and responsibilities within the sanitation sector, not only for implementing hardware solutions, but also for software aspects like operation and maintenance, promotion, facilitation, and awareness raising. We want to discuss with you how to create clear responsibilities and how to get communities, users, and municipalities to run sanitation systems in enforced coordination with water, solid waste, and the agricultural sector. Finally, we have a recommendation called private sector activation to stimulate innovation. We wish to discuss how to activate the private sector and motivate entrepreneurs to transfer WASH challenges into business opportunities. Incentives and capacity must be created for value chains and income generation in the reuse of water, nutrients, and energy. Finance, standards, and norms are needed, to, are needed for this. In conclusion, we would like to thank the partners and supporters that have made our session a success and look forward to fruitful collaboration in the future. If you happen to have any valuable comments or input, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us as we look forward from, to hearing from you. Thank you very much for your attention.